From floods to fires, there's hardly a community in Canada that isn't affected by natural disasters. Take a look at Peguis First Nation in Manitoba just over the weekend. Roughly 1,600 people have been forced from their homes due to the flooding there, and hundreds of homes have been damaged. The federal government says it will come up with a so-called adaptation strategy to better prepare this country for the impacts of climate change. It's launching public consultations for that plan today. Stephen Gibault is Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Hi, Minister Gibo. Good to see you again. Thank you very much, Roshi. Uh, Minister, you announced the plan for an adaptation strategy all the way back in December of 2020. And 18 months later, you're only now uh, announcing consultations for that. This is a climate change emergency. What's taking your government so long to get to this point? Well, actually, there's been a lot of work done since we made that announcement. Um, last year, we had five expert table groups working uh, with the federal government, with provinces, with municipalities, uh, helping us define some of the main elements of what a national adaptation strategy sh should should look should look like. They made the recommendations, uh, a series of recommendations to the government back in back in December. And as uh, as you said today, um, we were launching the the consultation so that by the fall we will have the first ever national adaptation strategy to climate change in Canada. Respectfully, though, my understanding is for, from at least, for example, some of the, the stakeholders involved in who will be involved in these consultations and who have been involved in those advisory groups so far, uh, that they even felt, for example, that the, uh, the, the discussions were too ambiguous. I think the quote uh, that I read in the Globe and Mail from Craig Stewart, the Insurance Bureau's vice president for federal affairs, he called it an intervention that uh, a group called Climate Proof Canada staged with yourself as well as your colleague, Minister Wilkinson, uh, to, to say that the strategy was too amorphous and high level and lacked urgency. So, so again, I'll put the question to you. Uh, this is a climate change. We're in an emergency situation. Has your government, uh, why has your government not moved faster? Well, we've already invested close to $4 billion in different adaptation measures uh, and projects that are being deployed as we speak in, in Quebec, in Ontario, in, uh, in Alberta, in Nova Scotia, to help communities adapt to climate change. But we know that it's only the, the beginning. Um, and and we, we, we've announced uh, in, in last budget that we were doubling, for example, nature-based solutions to adapt to climate change. Just west of here in Montreal, we're funding a $50 million uh, urban park that besides being uh, an urban park and something that that Canadians really uh, really strive for um, will help mitigate uh, spring floodings in, in in that part in, in that part of the city and and these projects I could I could I could go on there there's they're, they're happening all over the country, but we, what we need is to sit everyone at the table because the federal government can do a lot of things, but we can't do it all. We have very little power over urban planning, for example, which is a key component of any strategy to prepare for, for climate impact. So we need to have municipalities at the table with us. We need provinces. We need indigenous leadership at the table with us because they are at the forefront of, of climate impacts. And although the federal government can, can and should do a lot, we can't, we can't do it all and we need to have these partners at the table with us. I 100% I take your point about the fact that obviously implementing, uh, you know, things like better dams and, and trying to prevent floods and fires are not uh, solely uh, something that the federal government can do alone. Why weren't you sitting around the table with those partners earlier, though? I, I, I take your point about there being advisory groups. I just, I, you know, I think a lot of people in this country are worried about uh, you know, just how much of an emergency situation is it, it is. I, I look back to last year, you know, when, when these consultations hadn't even been launched yet, record-breaking flooding in southern British Columbia caused $450 million in insured damages. That's after the province spent hundreds of millions of dollars to fight wildfires that they themselves caused hundreds of millions of dollars too, right? Like the damage is mounting uh, while, while your government, and I take your point about the $4 billion too, but that's spread over 12, 12 years. Uh, well, we haven't been in power for for, for twelve years, Vashi, as uh, as you know. It's and going to be spread over twelve years. We 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 are we are taking action, and I have been talking about responding to climate change for close to three decades. So it's not like it's something it's something new for me. And although we would like to think that the federal government can, can do it all, or can just flick a switch and and find all the solutions to to to, to adapting to to climate change, this is a complex situation. And and if you look around the world. 
every country is struggling the way we are with ensuring that that we're we're prepared for for, for climate action. I wouldn't say that Canada is at the forefront, but I, we're, we're certainly not at the back of the pack when it comes to figuring out how we need to better prepare for 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 the impacts of climate change. Why why didn't we that why didn't we start start the consultations before? Well, we wanted to have the advice of experts before we launched into the consultations, so that we have a consultation document that has most of the elements we feel are necessary. But the reason why we're doing consultations, because we want to hear from Canadians, we want to hear from experts, we want to hear from Indigenous leaders and, and Indigenous elders. As we've done, for example, in, with the government of British Columbia, after the floods, we have set up a working group, about a, a dozen ministries and departments at the federal level, same on, with British Columbia, Indigenous communities at the table with us, figuring out how how we build back better in in the province of British Columbia so that we can avoid the type of impacts that we've seen over the last year there. Let's talk about what the strategy uh, might look like, obviously, given you're, you're doing consultations, but might look like in the future, and, and in particular, what it might necessitate. I, I was looking at the uh, International Institute for Sustainable Development's kind of assessment of what might be required when it comes to changing infrastructure, building inv infrastructure in order to mitigate some of these effects. They're looking at a, a, a value of between $150 billion and $1 trillion. Do you agree with that assessment? I, I mean, I, we're seeing a lot of assessment uh, happening, and and we're certainly value the the inputs of organization like like ISD and 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 many others. The federal government ha hasn't done that yet, and and part of the reason of of the strategy and these consultations is to work with our provincial, territorial colleagues, municipalities, to figure out what do we think will be needed in the short term, in the medium term, in in the long term, and obviously this this national strategy will be an evolving. Um, strategy, like it's not something we'll, we'll present in the fall and and will be set in stone. And, and by the way, I mean to come up with something like that in a matter of months, when you look at how historically uh, Canada has has responded to climate change, is almost an, an Olympian feat. And I, it's ambitious, but I, and I think we can do it. But we've rarely seen the Canadian government move as fast as we're moving when it comes to climate change. I mean, with with great respect, you you also just said we're not the worst, but we're not the best. Like, should Canadians be satisfied with an emergency like the nature of climate change and the effects of it right now that we're somewhere in the middle? No, we want to do, which is why we want to do better. Uh, which is why in 2023 we will host an international conference of uh, of experts and decision makers from all around the world who are specifically dedicated to looking at best practices around the world uh, on the issue of, of of adapting and being better better prepared to climate change, so that we can we can benefit from 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 what's what is being the the best and the brightest and and what is being done uh, around the world and and looking at how can we import these things in here in Canada and and frankly there are things that we're doing right that that can inspire. Uh, other countries and uh, that that they themselves can 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 adopt for for their own countries. A bottom line, Minister, before I let you go, for Canadians watching right now who are wondering, you know, what does this plan mean for my community, and when will I know? Uh, what can you tell them? At, at what point will your government be able to tell them? Here's the plan uh, to to safeguard your community. Well, by next fall, we want to have this national adaptation strategy adopted. So, in a matter of months. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time, as always. Thank you very much, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.